Hi, so now we're going to talk about the internal structure of the Earth and how scientists have figured out what's likely inside the Earth. Because we actually haven't been able to drill very deep compared to the thickness of the Earth. So we're not able to physically see what's inside the Earth, um, but we can learn about it in a few different ways. So we're going to talk about that. So the layers of the Earth have been described in a few different ways. Some of the categorization has to do with the composition and what it's actually made out of. And then some of the different ways they categorize it have to do with the density of the layers or the physical property of the layers. So I'm not going to focus too much on the bigger words here, the lithosphere, asthenosphere, mesosphere. Um, I just want to get, I want you all to get a general idea of the layers and what they're made out of. So we're going to look on the left hand side of this diagram. This is kind of like a pizza slice of the earth. And we're going to look along the left side and focus on the core, the mantle, and the crust. So if we look at a different view, so this is a cutout of the earth. Let me change the color here so you can see my pointer. Um, we see the core, mantle, and crust. And something that I think is pretty interesting is everything that we know of on the surface of Earth is on the crust. But the crust is thin relative to the thickness of Earth. The crust goes anywhere from zero. There are some places where the crust is extremely thin, um, but usually it's a couple miles thick. Um, to about 60 miles thick. So that seems like a lot. That seems very thick. But actually, if you do an analogy of the crust, it's like an egg where the outside of the, the egg is the shell. The mantle represents the white of the egg and the core represents the yolk of the egg. So I think that's pretty, pretty amazing to think about. So we're going to split this up into an inner core, an outer core. So I'm going to write I for inner, O for outer core. So the inner core of the Earth is under the most amount of pressure because it has layers of thousands of miles worth of rock and molten rock pushing down on it. So it's under the most amount of pressure. So the inner core is actually solid because of all the pressure, even though it's extremely hot. And it's made out of metals. So because of density and gravity pulling things in that have more mass, the Earth has had, now has layers based on the density of materials. So the core is made of metals, very dense, very heavy materials, lots of mass. Um, but the inner core is under so much pressure that it's held as a solid. And so overall, from the surface down, the heat increases and the pressure increases. So that's what we have to keep in mind. I mean, if you were under thousands of miles worth of rock, you'd definitely be under a lot of pressure. So the inner core has the most pressure, solid, solid metal. The outer core, on the other hand, this area in here, the outer core is also under a lot of heat and pressure, but the heat kind of outweighs the pressure, ha, <laughs> outweighs. So the heat is, it's so hot that the metals are actually liquid, so they're able to flow in the outer core. And this is actually what gives the Earth its magnetic field. I don't know if you have learned about that. So the outer core is actually liquid metal flowing around the center of the inner, inner core. In terms of the mantle, this layer here, this is also under a lot of heat and pressure. I mentioned that the, the crust can be as thick as 60 miles, so that's a lot of rock pressure. Uh, the mantle is basically made up of the same materials as a crust or similar materials, so it's, it's uh, minerals that make up rocks. So there are some rocks formed in the mantle. I brought some Play-Doh because this is similar to what the mantle is like. 
the mantle is hot, so a lot of the rocks are kind of flowy, but it's not just magma. A lot of people think that the mantle is made of magma. Some textbooks actually say that it's made of magma. That is not true. The mantle is actually made of rock. It doesn't flow as easily as mantle as magma because it is under so much pressure. So if I can get this Play-Doh out. So the mantle kind of flows like this where it is a solid but it's considered a plastic solid. So if you put pressure on this, if you balled up your Play-Doh and set it on the table, and put a textbook on it, it's obviously gonna over time flow. So the mantle flows, but it's considered a semi-rigid solid or a plastic solid because it can move. But the flow rate is a lot slower than Play-Doh. It's not as easy to move or as easy to flow. The flow rate of the mantle is about two centimeters per year on average. So that's about this much per year. So it's flowing very slowly. And the mantle is also broken up into a couple different layers based on the properties. And that would be the upper and lower mantle. So we're gonna put lower mantle an upper mantle like this. All right, and then the crust, we're gonna talk about the properties of crust a little later, but it's a thin solid rock structure for the most part. We know it's solid rock because we live on the crust and we see solid rocks all the time. There are some places where the crust has been melted because of heat coming out of the mantle and those are places where you have magma coming to the surface as lava, so places where volcanoes would be found. So how do we know about the layers of the Earth? We've actually drilled pretty deep into the Earth. Um, I think about two miles is about the deepest we've drilled. So we've never drilled deeper than the crust, so we don't know that way. There's some extreme places that I have visited called ophiolites, where rock from the mantle has been pushed up to the surface because of tectonic activity. And this is a great opportunity to study what's in the mantle, but we still can't really see it flowing because it's a solid rock at that point. It's cooled, it's not hot anymore. So how do we know what's going on inside the Earth? So one of the ways is um, we can use waves to study the properties of the inside of the Earth but that would be a lot of energy used if people were doing this, if we were putting energy into the earth to use waves to go through the different layers. So instead we use natural waves and we study the earth using earthquakes. So an earthquake is just a vibration of energy because of rapid release of energy when the rocks move against each other. So if you have a fault, a place where the rocks have shifted, that releases a ton of energy when that happens. And so from that point, wherever the earthquake occurred, energy radiates from that point outwards. So it goes through the earth, it goes at the surface, it goes in all directions. So we have a location where this occurs. It's a location with a lot of pressure. So earthquakes occur underground. They don't actually happen at the surface. We think about the epicenter because that's the location that we can visualize, a location on the surface of earth. But the focus is actually where the energy is produced. And so these waves radiate out in every direction. So people on the surface do feel them, right? Um, but you can actually feel them very far away because it radiates everywhere. It even goes through the center of Earth. So these waves go in all directions. And these are called seismic waves. And there's actually quite a few different seismic waves that are put out by an earthquake event and these waves have different properties but they also have different speeds so a primary wave is very fast speed so we can draw the velocity vector like this very fast a secondary wave is a slower speed but all these waves are produced at once so this is similar to if you and your friend were going to drive from your house to school and you had a car and your friend had a bike. So you left the house at the same time, but you would get there. Let's say you're the primary wave in your car 
You'd get to school and just wait around for your friend. When are they going to get here? Why did they take their bike? So that's like the secondary wave. So the waves are all produced at the same moment, but some of the waves are faster than others. They also have different properties. So some waves can travel through liquid material and some waves can only travel through solid material. Some waves can travel through all material. So that's how we learn about the interior of the Earth.